I'm going to start feeding my bees for winter. The uh, two reasons for feeding two to one mix uh, before winter for your winter prep is one, to get them up to winter weight. And two, if, you're, if your bees aren't already in a winter formation where brood nest is low and all their stores are up top, um, feeding is really a good way to do that. It, it really forces that queen to start going lower in the box. Uh, any stores or any open nectar they have below, they'll just start moving up along with the feed that you give them. They'll store that up top that brood nest will now shift down below. That's winter formation. So feeding is twofold. For winter feed, you want to do a two to one mix. That's two parts sugar to one part water. Uh, it's pretty thick. That's, um, it's, it's so they can store it. In springtime, you might have read, it's one to one mix because it resembles uh, nectar and they can do other things with it like wax building and um, brood rearing. So, but for today's demonstration, we're doing two to one. Let's get into the, the mathematics. I'm, I'm sorry there's a little bit of uh, math involved. We'll, we'll keep it real simple because it is. It's just basic math. The, the formulas that you use, it, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, you, you, you're, you're dealing with sugar, which is dry weight versus liquid, which is liquid measure. And you know that's important in, in things like jarring your honey, of course, uh, because there's such a, a discrepancy you know, between the two. But in terms of feeding your bees a two to one mix, I just don't believe it's that, that important. So to keep things really easy, I use five gallon buckets and 25 pound bags of sugar. That just keeps the math real simple. So um, you may or may not know, a gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds. For easy math, we're just going to call it eight pounds. So we're going to do a two to one ratio, a 25 pound bag of sugar. We know that a gallon of water is eight pounds. A half a gallon is four pounds. That would be 12 pounds. The sugar is 25 pounds. So we're, we're one pound off there. That's how I do it. It's how I've always done it. If you really want to tweak it and get it exact, that's, that's fine too. So uh, I use a gallon and a half of water per 25 pound bag. Some of the materials you're gonna need, it's, it's not all that difficult. You're gonna need five gallon buckets, 25 pound bags of sugar, something to heat the water up in. Uh, a lot of people say you don't have to heat the water. I just, I can never get it to break down, you know, right out of the garden hose, maybe maybe one to one, but even then I have a hard time. So I always heat the water up. So what I do is I bring the water to a boil. I have a, like, a, like one of those big gas grill things, uh, 30,000 BTU burners and a big turkey pot. So that's how I, I heat my water up. You need something to stir with. Uh, try to avoid something metal, like a piece of conduit. I've used that in the past. Uh, like some EMT tubing, it, it tends to scratch the bottom of the buckets and you'll get shards of plastic in your sugar mix. I, I don't think that's um, detrimental to the bees. I'm, I'm sure they sift that out, but I, you don't want plastic floating around there. I don't anyway, so I use something wooden, either a dowel. Um, today, I'm probably gonna use a, uh, an entrance reducer uh, from the, the, you know, the hives. Um, and then that's, real, that's all you need. You need the five gallon buckets, 25 pound bags of sugar, uh, a, a vessel to heat your water up in, and um, something to stir it with. I don't heat my sugar up in the same thing. I don't heat it up with the water. I just, because if you dump that water out and you have residual sugar in there, when you turn that burner back on, you have risk of car caramelization. You don't want anything caramelized with your bees. It's, it, it's very harmful to them. I'm not sure you know, how much a little bit of residual would be, but just to play it safe, I keep it separate. I heat my water up in the, the stock pot. I put the sugar in the bucket. I hold a little bit back. Um, I would say two thirds of the bag I put in the plastic bucket. Then I pour all of that hot water in the bucket, I mix it up, 
and then I add the remaining one third of sugar in. The only reason why I break it up like that is because it is really hard to mix the full 25 pound, uh, pounds of sugar to the one and a half gallons of water. So I kind of ease up on the sugar, get that all mixed and diluted, and then I add the rest of the sugar and mix that up. It's just easier. I find it to be easier. I'm gonna actually demonstrate mixing the, the sugar. Uh, we'll do that right now. Then after that, we will go out to the bee yard. And all you need for that is, well, your hive tool and your feeders, whatever you choose to use. Today, we're gonna to be doing hive top feeders. All right, so we're just gonna take our gallon and a half of water, which is going to be 12 pounds. A little bit more than 12 pounds, because remember, we rounded. Then we need our 25 pound bag of sugar. We're not gonna dump it in yet. We're just gonna wait for that water. I mean, we can get it set up in the bucket, because remember I said I don't mix in the pot. So we can go ahead and dump a good portion of our sugar in the bucket. Like I said, hold some back because it's going to be real uh, tricky to get that mixed in. So I try to get that all mixed up. I leave a bunch of sugar behind. I get that mixed. So we got the sugar. Now we just have to wait for the... Um, the water to boil up. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's steaming up pretty good. That's usually a pretty good indication that uh, the water is boiling. So we're going to turn the heat off. Don't be concerned with uh, the boiling water caramelizing the sugar. It takes a lot more than 212 degrees in water to caramelize sugar. Plus, as soon as it boils, we kind of just take that off. By the time you, you know, this water hits that sugar, the minute it hits that sugar, it's, it's immediately going to start cooling off. Uh, always, you know, have something as a pot holder and be careful because steam burns are the absolute worst. So don't use something wet. That's like kitchen safety stuff right there. So we're going to use this guy and I'm just going to start stirring that up a little bit. And you know, like I said before in the intro, um, don't don't use something metal because you know you you can't avoid scraping the bottom of the bucket or the sides, and the metal just kind of scratches it up. I mean, one it, it 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 puts the plastic in there, and also when you scratch up a bucket, it kind of loses its. Uh, not that I would use these buckets for food grade, but. It gives a, uh, you know, uh, a porous area for stuff to settle in. So, all right, so this is all pretty much broken down. And we're gonna put the rest of our sugar in there. It's granular sugar, it's white sugar, but when it melts down, it does get like a yellowish hue to it. Uh, don't think that it caramelized. It's just the way the sugar, you know, it breaks down and it looks pretty, you know, yellowish brown. When I first mixed up sugar, it took me forever because I saw that and I'm like, oh my God, I must've got the water too hot or something. And, uh, Lots of research before I put that on my bees, and I found out now nah, that's just how sugar breaks down. So 
as that. And then uh, I will see you again out in the yard as I am feeding the bees. And you will see why I prefer hive top feeders because you're gonna see how easy this actually is. It's just really non-invasive. I'm not even wearing a, uh, a hat or a veil or any protect, and I'm not suggesting that you don't need to, you really should. Um, you just dump it on in there, fill it right up to the brim. Now I'm, I'm only filling up the one side because these hives aren't really that leveled that well. And if I fill up both sides, uh, the syrup's all gonna pool over here when it gets down to the bottom. So I'm only doing the one side. I'm out here often enough where I can just top that off. Eventually I'll have the hives, um, you know, properly leveled where they'll be level this way and just pitched a little bit forward. So then you move over to this hive. And we fill this guy all the way up. Right up to the brim. Another thing I like about hive top feeders is, you know, going into winter, you could really double check the level of your hives because the syrup in the uh, feeder actually acts as a level. <laughs> so I can see that these hives are pitched front and left. That's about all we're gonna fit in there. And they will start drinking that down. That's it. That is how easy it is to feed with high top feeders. Catch you next time. Thanks.